So we've built these paper trebuchets, and in launching them, we see that they follow a certain path through space. Watching the foil ball here. And it hit just the edge of the table there. Let's watch that again. And what we want to know is if the projectile travels a distance d, and it rises to a distance h vertically, how can we describe that with an equation? How can we model this behavior with an equation? And that's our goal. So we're talking about motion of a projectile that we've launched, say, from our catapult. And we know that that projectile motion is going to have this kind of shape. It goes up, curves, and comes down. And it lands some distance away from the point where we launched it. So we are going to give some names to some points here. It's up to us to give a name to the point where we launch a projectile, and the simplest place to call it is x equals 0, y equals 0. So we're locating the launch site at the origin of our coordinate system, 0, 0. Now we know the particle comes up, reaches some apex, and comes back down, and we're going to call the distance that it lands away from there d. So this distance right here, is d, and we're going to call the height that the particle reaches, the maximum height, h. So we know the particle has traveled horizontally at distance d, and the highest distance it reached was h, and this parabolic motion that we're talking about, the most basic kind of flight path, is symmetric about this line where I've marked the h. So what fraction of d do we know this is? when we've traveled from 0 to this point where we got the highest point. What fraction of d? It's half of d. So I know this point right here, if I give it some coordinates, what's the x coordinate and the y coordinate? Well, the y coordinate, we gave it a name. It's called h. And the x coordinate is half of d. It's traveled halfway to the place it's going. And the full distance is d. And if it comes back down to the ground, it starts at 0, comes up, comes back down. The y coordinate here is 0. Let's label these axes. So this is x, and this is y. Graph is not complete if it doesn't have labeled axes. Don't forget that. So let's see. What do I know about this function? Well, I see it's curved. So this is not going to be one of these y equals mx plus b kind of functions. It cannot be a linear function. But I know it's something that's going to get bigger as I get further from 0, and then it's going to get smaller as it gets closer to d, and I happen to know that it's going to depend on x squared. It's going to be a parabolic kind of function or a quadratic function. So let's, uh, let's start with some things we know about the function. We know it's tied to two points, the points x equals 0 and x equals d, those are points where the function is equal to 0. So I know this function, y is a function of x, is going to be proportional to, I'm going to use this capital A as a constant of proportionality, it's going to be proportional to two factors of x, and here's why I know that. I know that I have x minus something is going to be one factor, and x minus something else is going to be the other factor. And the reason I know that is something called the zero product property. So if I have a times some other thing times some other thing, I have three factors here. At least how many of those factors must be zero if y is going to be zero? Well, what I know is one of them, at least one, must be zero to make y equal to zero. Now if a was zero, that would not be very interesting, because we would not have a function of x. If I just had y equals 0, that's just a flat line here. So that's not going to give me this kind of motion. So what we want is to have variation in x. So I know if I plug in something in this factor, I need to be able to get this factor right here to be equal to 0. So x minus, well, if x is 0, then 0 minus 0 would give me 0. So that works to tie me to this point. 
and then x minus something else needs to give me 0. Well, when x is d, d minus d would give me 0. x is d minus d gives me 0. So I know my function needs to look like this. So we could simplify that, uh, get rid of at least some of those parentheses. I know this is going to look like an a times x minus 0. Uh, in my book, that's just called x. So let's say x a times x times x minus d. Can we distribute that? x times x gives me an x squared. And x times minus d gives me a minus xd. So what do we know now? Well, we know that uh, at a certain point here, the height, we haven't used this yet, uh, is going to be h. So let's go back a step. I think this will be maybe easier if we just look at this first form. I know when I come to the value x equals d over 2, that's when I'm going to have y equal to h. So y will be h when x is equal to d over 2. So h is going to equal a. I'm coming down here from this equation. x is going to be d over 2. d over 2 minus 0, that's just d over 2. And what if, what if I have d over 2 minus d? Well, that's just going to be minus d over 2. I know if I take some number and uh, subtract twice that number from itself, I'm going to get minus the number. So that's what we're doing here. So I see that h, the relationship I'm talking about is that h is equal to a times d times d times minus 1. That's going to be a minus d squared. And in my denominator, I have a 2 times 2, so over 4. So h is going to be a times negative d squared over 4. So what does that mean a has to equal? Well, solving for a, I see that it must equal 4h over d squared and be negative. Now, does that make sense that we're going to have a negative value for our leading coefficient in this quadratic? Well, we already saw that the when we have a quadratic in standard form, Notice we're using a lowercase a here. ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, this a needs to be negative if I'm going to have a frown or umbrella type instead of a, a cereal bowl or a smile type parabola. So it's good that this turned out negative. So what does this tell us? Let's go back to this function here and plug in what we know. I know that y is going to equal a plugging in what I found for a here. That's minus 4h over d squared times x times x minus d. Or we could just go straight to this expression, x squared minus x dx. So let's do that. We have x squared minus dx. And we need to distribute that a over both of those values. So this is going to give us a minus 4h over d squared, just distributing, times x squared. And I see 1d is going to cancel. And my minus and minus is going to give me a plus. So I'm going to have plus 4hx over just one factor of d. So that is our function in standard form. You could say plus 0 there, too. So my c value is 0. My a value is minus 4h over d squared. And my b value is 4h over d. So let's check that these have the right dimension. I know that if this is a height, the height y, each of these terms needs to have a value of length. So here I have x squared and d squared. Those are going to cancel because d is a length. And I'm left with h, so that gives me just a value of length. Here I have 
two factors of length, h and x in the numerator, divided by one factor. That also checks out and gives me a length, and zero here. That uh, could be a length. Makes sense. So this checks out. So this is how we get a standard form. This is a certain kind of vertex form because the point that we gave this is called the vertex of the parabola and it is d over 2 comma h and this is how we get a parabola that has two x-intercepts at 0 and d and the vertex at that point that we specified. So in our next video what we're gonna see is that this leading coefficient that determines how curved this is, is going to be related to gravity, because you can imagine if gravity was stronger, this thing would be more curved and it wouldn't go as far. And it's also related to how fast we launch the projectile. So if I launch this thing faster, it might go further than this. So this leading coefficient will depend on both gravity and the velocity, and we'll also see a similar kind of dependence in this linear coefficient too. So check out the next video, and we'll explain where those terms come from physically to give the H and the D that we want to know.